In the last video, I think I got through everything I wanted to in terms of showing you how to meter voltage, resistance, and current uh, in a very basic circuit. And so what I'd like to do in this one is just kind of take it to a more practical level. Um, so we're going to start by looking at this power supply, this FCPS, and we're going to assume that there's no troubles on it. So we're going to assume that all four outputs are complete circuits with the resistor at the end. So let's meter the voltage of the outputs. I'm just going to set our meter to um, DC voltage. That's a good arrow. And we'll just put one terminal on one side of output one and the other on the other. And what I would expect to see going off of memory, it's been a while since I've worked on this type of power supply. I think a complete circuit would be about negative 1.5. And remember the reason it's negative is because all of the markings on these are, f are shown in an alarm state. So I think a complete circuit, uh, the voltage when it sees the resistor or when the 4.7k resistor is you know, ha is landed on the terminals essentially, whether it's right there on the terminals or at the end of the circuit, is about 1.5. And then when it goes into trouble, um, I think it's about 3.0. Now when this thing were to activate, if it were to sense the correct voltage on the input down here, hopefully you can see where I'm moving my mouse, this polarity would reverse like we talked about before, and it would go to somewhere around 24 volts. It depends on all kinds of things, but let's it's, it's, suffice it to say 24 volts. But let's say right now it's showing negative 1.5. Now that number may be fairly accurate for this model of power supply. It may not be, but that's sort of irrelevant because what you're going to want to do is establish a baseline of what's normal when you get to um, a panel. Because you're going to be in situations where you're on panels you're not familiar with, um, or you, you know, and you, maybe you don't know what's normal. So in this case you have four outputs right here. You could just move your meter from output one to output two to output three to output four. Um, and assuming everything's normal you should have the same setting on each one of these. If it were a fire panel these voltages would probably be different but they're all going to do the same thing where they have a negative voltage present in a normal state and they're going to reverse on alarm and that voltage is going to increase on an open circuit somewhere out in the field. So let's do that now. Let's assume that we put our meter on the terminals that we're showing here on output 1, but instead of getting 1.5, we're actually getting, let's say, negative 3.0 or something close to that. Now if that's the case, we get negative 3.0 there, but if we were to put our meter on any of the other outputs, we had negative 1.5, then we'd know we had an open circuit. So the next thing I would do is I would confirm that by disconnecting the wires, changing my meter from DC current to resistance, and meter the end of line. Um, but something weird is going to happen when you do that. So let's assume that you've got something like 10 horn strobes on this NAC1. You take it off, um, you take the, the wires off, and you meter them. Instead of metering this terminal here, you'll meter, you know, you'll disconnect them and put your meter leads right on the copper of the wire. And then you're going to set your meter for resistance. Let's say that when you do that, you get an OL. Hold on, I'm going to so we're on resistance now. Let's say that the meter reads OL. I should have looked up what that means. I've been doing this for a long time. I still I don't know if that means open line or what that means, but essentially it means it's infinite resistance. There's no continuity at all um, across that pair. Uh, I'm going to go on a brief tangent to try to make a point here. When I was very new at this and on my own and I was troubleshooting an open circuit, I was going back and forth from junction box to jump junction box and I could swear at one point I was at a circuit where I put my meter on two wires and it gave me this OL which is again as big of an open as it could possibly be essentially. It's like you're metering the air and then 
went to do something else, came back, metered it again, and instead of OL, I had something like, let's say, I don't know, 200, 256K kilo ohms. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I could have sworn I just had OL here. How did it change? And the reason is, if you remember in one of my earliest videos, I described how horn strobes work, and they've got a diode internally in them that prevents supervisory current from entering the device in a when it's in a normal state before it goes into alarm right so and I also mentioned in this last video that your meter when set to resistance even though my picture here makes it look like it's set to um, this continuity here but anyway so you get the idea we're we're, we're looking at uh, resistance your meter is going to be putting out voltage onto that circuit so again I have lifted these off we're no longer on the terminals here so we're just directly to the wires the wires have been unscrewed my meter is now gonna put voltage on this circuit and depending on which way I land my meters my meter leads one way that voltage is actually gonna enter the device and the other way it's gonna be blocked by the diode so if you disconnect a NAC circuit you meter for resistance one way you should get well okay so you also have to remove the end of line because if you have the end of line on there you should get about 4.7 K if it's if that's the right value for your panel but a lot of times you'll notice when you flip your meter your meter leads around you're gonna get a different value of like sometimes it's 3.9 K sometimes it's 4.2 K and the reason is when it's that lower value you're metering not just your end line resistor, but you're metering the complete circuit of every horn strobe on that circuit in combination with, in parallel with the end line resistor. So it's not unusual at all to meter like a 4.2K and then flip your meter leads around and get 4.7K. And you want to remember that that's a, a possibility because it'll throw you off for troubleshooting in certain circumstances if you don't know what to expect. Um, and so, um, I went off on a little bit of a tangent there, but I think it was kind of important. So let's say that we meter this circuit when it's disconnected and we have, um, let's use the example that's on the meter right now. We have 256K kilo ohms, and then we flip our meter around and we get OL. So what that's telling us is, okay, we're not seeing our endline resistor, right? We're seeing at least one horn strobe, possibly two horn strobes. We don't know the internal resistance of a horn strobe, but we know we don't have a complete circuit, so we have a problem. So now we have to go out in the field and figure out um, what our problem is. Now, if it's a really good install and they've left prints by the panel like they're supposed to, um, you know, this may not be that big of a deal. Your first job is gonna be figuring out, okay, what area of the building does output one cover. There's a few different ways you could do that depending on what type of building you're in. You know, maybe you disconnect this circuit, put this panel into alarm so that all these other three circuits, the strobes start flashing and the horns go off so you'll know that your area of the building is the one that's not sounding. Or maybe you do the opposite, you take everything else off and you just, you, you, you land this one and of the strobes that are sounding, or flashing, you know, you'll know the the next one in line that's not is most likely your problem. Well, sometimes you won't be able to do that. Sometimes they won't let you. But that part of troubleshooting is kind of common sense in my in my opinion. So we're going to focus more on meter readings, and you know, in, depending on the type of building, maybe you'll be able to follow the um, the conduit, or you'll be able to see the wire. Most of the time, you're not going to know. This will go up into some conduit into a junction box and you're not going to know what area of the building it covers. You know, hopefully they labeled the wires, but if it's an older install, there's a good chance they didn't. So most likely what's going to happen is you're going to go and start opening up junction boxes or taking off horn strobes that have junction boxes behind them, right? And so a real basic way to troubleshoot an open circuit. So let's let's imagine that each one of these is a horn strobe that we've already identified to be on our circuit. Um, so you wouldn't go to all three of these at once. You'd just go to the first one, you'd take the horn strobe down. Um, before we do this, let's say we went back up here and reconnected this circuit. So instead of, let's get rid of everything here, instead of 
disconnecting the circuit for a resistance. You know, we did that. We didn't have a resistor, so we landed it back, and now we have three volts. Well, let's say we go down here. We set our meter to DC voltage. We go to this first box. I go to a red, and then I go to I go to my black, and I get three volts, right? Well, in this drawing, it's pretty in, in, it's pretty easy to see, like left to right. Okay, so our panel is clearly to our voltage, and because it's these neat and clean three boxes here, you can kind of figure out. Um, where I'm going with this most likely most of the time it's not going to be that clean but I want to make I want to make a point so if we have three volts here at this first wire we know we're good to our panel right I can essentially meter my panel from here so let's undo that I would have first gone to, left it on voltage and metered these wires real quick just because it's so easy um, and the reason I say that is in most cases you're going to have a junction box with more wires in there. You know, maybe you have some SLC, maybe you have more than one NAC circuit. Uh, it doesn't hurt to just throw it on there real quick just in case something weird is happening. But more than likely, if you took down the horn strobe and these two were landed on it, you know there's not going to be any voltage on there. Now we're going to go to resistance. Oops, I'm still on the wrong color as usual. We'll go to resistance. Go to red. We'll go to gray. Uh, it didn't go to gray apparently, but that's okay. And let's say it's still open, right? OL. Okay, so we know we're good to our panel. If we were to put this horn strobe back up on this junction box here, then we can move on, right? We're, we're okay to the panel. We're not okay to the end of the line. We need to get closer to the end of the line. Um, okay, so we move on. In this case, I'm going to skip the middle one just because you already know what I'm going to get. Once I mount these two wires again, I'm essentially, there's going to be continuity gray to gray, continuity red to red. So now I'm going to, I can expect to see voltage here, right? So let's say I do the same thing I just did there. I have voltage on this new wire that I just drew the arrow to. Again, I can't draw an arrow. Um, so now I have three volts there, and I still don't have my end of line here, right? So it's further down the line. Well, let's say those two devices this is back up this is a complete circuit I put this one back up this is a complete circuit and now I get to this last one and I'm gonna set for voltage I'm gonna meter here and here I get my three volts again and then I go to resistance, so now I'm metering resistance. I know I have three volts here, and let's say when I meter resistance, whoops, I thought I had uh, the right color there. We're going to cross the colors, but that's okay, you get the point. When I go to resistance here, now I get 4.7K. If you ever get to a junction box when you're troubleshooting a circuit like this, and you have your panel voltage on one side, your end of line on the other, you know you found the problem. Even if you took this horn strobe down, because of the way that horn strobes are wired, where when the, phys like when the face of it, the actual device is disconnected, at least newer model horn strobes, that causes an open circuit. So you might have the most subtle problem where there was either a loose wire or that device wasn't mounted securely. The point I'm trying to make is, if you get to a junction box where you've got voltage one way, resistance or end of line the other way, you're at the problem, so you don't need to keep going. That may sound obvious for people with some experience, but I guarantee there's people out there who have been tracing an open circuit, took a device down, had 3 volts to the left, 4.7K to the right, and didn't know what that meant. They didn't realize they had already found the problem. So they put it back up and keep going, and at some point, you know, if you don't understand the high level, and by high level I mean like big picture, basics, if you don't understand that, you might not know enough to know I already found my problem.